Good morning and welcome to Tail and Fern Free Church uh, online. We're glad you can join us. Uh, this evening service will be taken by a David Ferguson, our, a student. Uh, he will preach online at 6 and in both churches, Hilton at 5 p.m. and Tain at 6.30 p.m. This coming Wednesday will be uh, the last of our Zoom uh, prayer meetings. So as from the following Wednesday, uh, the midweek meetings on a Wednesday night will be in both churches at half past seven. Next Sunday will be our new church collection day, not this Sunday as I uh, intimated. So next Sunday is the first Sunday of the month. Then on Sunday 19th September, uh, we hope to celebrate the Lord's Supper at both evening services. So that will be in Hilton at 5 and in Tain at 6.30. Now as various groups uh, resume, we're looking for new volunteers to help out with some of these things. So at the moment we're looking for folk to go on crash rota. You'd only be on probably once every three months, uh, two, three months anyway. And we're looking for folk who would do road to recovery tea rota. So that's on a Tuesday night. And again, that will be once every two months, possibly even every three months. These are great ways uh, to serve uh, the Lord. Uh, so if you can help with any of these, get in touch uh, with myself or Andrew. Well, we're going to worship God. We're going to sing from Psalm 20, the Sing Psalms version of Psalm 20. May the Lord answer you when you cry in distress. May Jacob's God keep you, whose name you confess. May God send assistance from his holy place and grant you from Zion support by his grace. Psalm 20, we're going to sing the whole of this psalm. Let's bow our heads now in a word of prayer. Let's call on God's name in prayer. 
Lord God of heaven and earth, that the psalmist described you as his strong confidence. And Lord, we pray that that would be true of us, that each one of us could say that, that, that we have complete confidence in you. Because so often there are so many things, so many people, Lord, that, that, that let us down, that show us that we ought not to have put our confidence in them. But Lord, that will never be true of you. You will never let us down. You'll never turn your back on us. You'll never walk away from us. So we thank you, Lord, for that. And at the outset of our worship today, Lord, our longing is, our desire, our prayer is that you would be pleased to meet with us. That as we study the Bible together, that you, O oh Lord, would make yourself known to each one of us. We know that you're present when your people meet to worship you. But we pray, Lord, that we would be left in no doubt this morning. The Lord God of heaven has spoken to us in his word. Lord, we desire that our worship would bring glory to you. We know that we're not special in, in any way, that what uh, worship we have to offer you is, is nothing extraordinary, Lord. But we pray that it would come from our hearts. We pray, Lord, that we within us you would stir us up to praise your holy name and that our worship would be pleasing to you and bring glory uh, to your name. And we pray, Lord, that we will be heaven-focused, that the things today that weigh us down, that burden us, that distract us, would be taken from us, even for this uh, hour of worship, Lord. We ask that you would help us to cast all our cares on you and to believe, Lord, that you care for us. We pray for our world and we continue, Lord, to petition you on behalf of Afghanistan. We see all the trouble, Lord. We see the bloodshed. We see the loss of life. And Lord, we realize it's still ongoing and we don't know when it will end. We pray, Lord, for those endangered. We pray for those who grieve. We remember those fleeing for their lives, Lord, as they seek to cross the border or, or get out some other way. Lord, that you would help them and help all the organizations that seek uh, to support them. And Lord, as we see the plight of these people, we, we need to be thankful and to give you thanks for the fact that we live in a country that has peace, for the fact that we're protected so from so much uh, extremes. And Lord, we pray for our nation, we pray for our leadership, we pray for our governments, and we commit them to you. We pray for them, and Lord, as they wrestle just now with, with increasing COVID and, and a greater spread and concerns about how to deal with that. We ask that you would give them wisdom, Lord, in all these things. And, and, and Lord, we... We're thankful that we are protected from so much danger. But Lord, we continue to pray that those who are over us would grasp their need of you. That as you teach us, Lord, again, that this COVID situation is one that is out with our control. Lord, that you would drive us to yourself. That you would drive our politicians to yourself. That we would once again, Lord, look heavenward. Look to you for all our wisdom and all our decision making. Bless our communities, Lord, we pray, and those struggling within them. Eh, there are, there's so much pain, so much hurt, so many challenges, Lord. We think particularly today of those caught up in addiction, Lord, and we ask that you would help us to help them. Uh, we pray, Lord, as we reach out to them, uh, that you would enable us to show the love of Jesus to them, practically, prayerfully, but also, Lord, in the way we present your word to them, in the way we engage with them, in the concern that we show for them. So help us, Lord, we pray, and help them to realize that there is help available and that they would seek it out. So be with us, Lord, today. Lead us into your truth as we turn to it, as we read the Bible, as we think about it together. Shed the light of your Holy Spirit upon us so that we, O Lord, today would be drawn to you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me speak to the youngsters then for a wee moment. So today I brought in our newest toy. It's quite a big toy. Wait, I'll get a hold of it. Here it is. Pretty huge. And I don't know if you know what it means, what it is. It could be could be a giant Nerf gun 
or it could be an armored nerf tank or something like that it's really big it's hard to keep a hold of but it's actually none of these things it is a fogging machine okay so it's going to be used to spray the church with antiviral spray with disinfectant after every service to make sure that the whole building is clean before the next service so it cleans buildings it cleans everything but it doesn't clean people now i know it looks like it could be fun you could you know you could use it as a as a giant water pistol and spray your pals it's only got water in it at the moment just got water in it at the moment okay and it's very noisy when it's on so i'm going to show you what it's like okay let me i'll show you what it does okay so watch out for the for the spray once i put it on now it's really noisy you might have to cover your ears <laughs> I'm just spraying water there at the moment. I'm not spraying disinfectant. So it would be fun with your pals, I know, but maybe not safe. But anyway, here's the thing. Even with disinfectant, it won't clean people. And that's because people need to be cleaned from the inside out. So it's our hearts that are sinful. And the only person who can clean us from the inside out is Jesus Christ. So you ask him to do that, to forgive your sins and to cleanse you. Do you know, in the Lord's Prayer that we're just going to do, we ask Jesus to do exactly that, to forgive us our sins. So let's do the Lord's Prayer together. And you think about the words, and I hope we mean these words when we say them. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We're going to read from the Bible now. We're going to read from the book of Jude. So very near the end of your Bibles, the second last book. We've been looking at Jude. This is our third week and uh, we're not quite going to finish it uh, today. We'll come back to it one other time. But we're going to read uh, from Jude. We're going to read from verse 11. Pick up a reading at verse 11 and we'll read to the end of the chapter. So let's hear God's word. So the background, sorry, I should maybe remind you of the background that... Um, Jude has been exposing false teachers in the church and warning us to be on our guard from them. And at verse 11, he says, Woe to them! They have taken the way of Cain. They have rushed for profit into Balaam's error. They've been destroyed in Korah's rebellion. These men are blemishes at your love feasts, eating with you without the slightest qualm. Shepherds who feed only themselves. They are clouds without rain, blown along by the wind. Autumn trees without fruit and uprooted twice dead. They are wild waves of the sea foaming up their shame. Wandering stars for whom blackest darkness has been reserved forever. Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied about these men. See, the Lord is coming with thousands upon thousands of his holy ones to judge everyone and to convict all the ungodly of all the ungodly acts they have done in the ungodly way. And of all the harsh words ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These men are grumblers and fault finders. They follow their own evil desires. They boast about themselves and flatter others for their own advantage. But dear friends, remember what the apostles of our Lord Jesus foretold. They said to you, in the last times there will be scoffers who will follow their own ungodly desires. These are the men who divide you. Who follow mere natural instincts and do not have the spirit. But you, dear friends, build yourselves up in your most holy faith and pray in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in God's love as you wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to bring you to eternal life. Be merciful to those who doubt. Snatch others from the fire and save them. To others show mercy mixed with fear hating even the clothing stained by corrupted flesh. To him who is able to keep you from falling 
and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy to the only God our Saviour be glory, majesty, power and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord before all ages now and forevermore. Amen. If you look with me at words that you find in verse 23. In verse 23, snatch others from the fire and save them. When the great English preacher of old, uh, John Wesley, was just six years old, uh, the house he was living in went on fire and he was the only one who did not escape. And when he thought he was surely going to die there, a neighbour climbed on someone's shoulder and dragged him out a window to safety just before the roof collapsed. Wesley never forgot what that person did for him. And here in today's passage, Jude tells us we need to be doing that for others. He doesn't mean save them from burning buildings, but from the greater danger of hell. Jude is calling us to be God's firefighters, saving people from the fiery flames of judgment. But you know, that's not a task for a novice. And Jude acknowledges that and he tells us first how we need to be prepared for this task. So we saw in our first look at this letter how his purpose in writing it was to contend for the faith that was once for all delivered to the saints. And now in these closing verses, he's telling us how to do that, how we contend for the faith. And there are two parts to that, because just as a firefighter must retain a certain level of fitness, so too must the Christian. You can't expect to rescue someone unless you're fit for that task yourself. So Jude's advice is twofold. First of all, he says, look after yourselves. And then secondly, he says, look out for others. And so these will be our two headings today. He talks about looking after yourself in verses 20 and 21, and he talks about looking out for others in 22 and 23. And in typical Jude fashion, he gives us how many points for each? He gives us three points for each. Three ways in which you are to look after yourself, followed by three ways in which you are to look out for others. So today you're really going to get two three-point sermons for the price of one. Look after yourself then. It's our first main heading. And we see this in verses 20 and 21. And he mentions three ways in which to, you are to look after yourself. They are build, pray, keep. So build, first of all. Build yourselves up, verse 20, in your most holy faith. The tense of the word he uses means keep on building yourselves up. This is something that needs constant attention. Just as, say, a house that has not been maintained, it will soon start to deteriorate. The same is true about the Christian if we're not looking out for ourselves and our faith. And just as that house that is neglected will eventually not be fit for purpose, the same is true of a Christian who neglects their faith, who neglects their spiritual health. Now, where do you start then? Well, the one essential for building anything up is a foundation, a solid foundation. And, and Jude emphasizes this, the foundation on which we are to build. He says, build yourself up in your most holy faith. In your faith. Now, that doesn't mean what any individual chooses to believe. He's talking there about the truths of the Word of God. He's talking about the same thing he was talking at the start when he said, contend for the faith once delivered to the saints. What we have in our Bibles, that's our foundation. And if you're going to grow as a Christian, and if I'm going to grow, then we need to be building on the Word of God. We need to be feeding on the Word of God. If you're going to be strong in your faith, you need to be wrestling with what the Bible has to say. So that means not just skipping over the passages that are difficult, but praying that God will show you what, what they mean so that you'll understand them. You know, I love seeing chunky babies. And, and, and you're always tempted to say, oh, he or she is very solid. 
And you can be almost certain that the answer that will come back is no wonder. They never stop eating. And, and, and our spiritual health, our solidity as Christians, is proportionate to how much time we spend with God, how much time we spend in God's Word. Build yourselves up in your most holy faith. Now, I want you to notice that Jude, he's not standing over us with a big stick saying, you need to do this, you must do this or else. Instead, what we've seen from him as he repeatedly addresses his audience as beloved or dear friends, what we have here is, is, is instead the concern of a loving pastor who's looking out over his people and he's saying, you need to look after yourselves. And this is where you should start. Build yourselves up. But then he adds a second step that's required in looking after yourselves, and it's in verse 20. Pray, at the end of the verse, pray in the Holy Spirit. The life of the believer, the life of the Christian, is one of dependence on God. So the Christian never says, hey, I'm okay. The Christian knows that they need God's help on a daily basis on a daily basis. The evangelist called Billy Sunday, he used to give this advice to young Christians, but you know it's for all Christians. He said, talk to God, listen to God, and talk to others about God. So we talk to God when we pray, we listen to God when we read, and we talk to others about God, both when we fellowship with fellow Christians, but also when we share our faith with others. Talk to God, listen to God, talk to others about God. And here Jude puts talking to God second on his list of what the Christian needs to be doing to keep themselves, to look after themselves. But he does add, he does add this condition to it. It is pray in the Holy Spirit. What exactly does that mean? Well, you know, as we pray, often our prayers, they could be selfish. We focus on ourselves, the things we want to for ourselves. And these might not be the things God wants for us. So we need the Holy Spirit to guide us in our prayers, to prompt us. You see, the Spirit knows the mind of God. And so the Spirit can lead us to pray things that are in line with God's will. So when you pray, you ask the Holy Spirit. Ask Him to teach you. Ask Him to lead you so that your prayers reflect what God wants for you. So we're looking at the three ways that Jude says in which you are to look after yourselves. So first of all, he said, build. Then he said, pray. And thirdly, he says, keep. Verse 21. Keep yourselves in God's love as you wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to bring you to eternal life. I mentioned in a previous sermon that Jude has this emphasis on, on keeping so it's there right at the start, at the end of verse 1. You are kept by Jesus Christ. It's there pretty much at the end in verse 24, to him who is able to keep you from falling. But it's also here with a different emphasis. You are to keep yourselves. You are to keep yourselves. How does that work? Well, he says, keep yourselves in the love of God. How are we to do that? What control do we have over God's love for us? How are we to ensure that we stay within the canopy of God's love. Well, Jesus told us how. Jesus gave us the answer to that. In John chapter 15, Jesus said this, if you, love, if you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love. You keep, he says, and you'll be kept in my love. So that means we, we keep ourselves by, by seeking to obey God, by living as the Bible tells us, not rebelling against God's word. Now, just to be clear, Jude is not saying that God will stop loving you if, if you're one of his, if you're a Christian, if you're a child of God. He will never stop loving you. He won't. But it's possible that you lose that sense of his love when you've when you stepped out of line. I mean, we know that. We know that from our own experience with our own earthly parents. When, when you disobeyed them or when you disappointed them, they didn't stop loving you. 
but they, they may not have been expressing that love in, 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 in the way they did before. You, you become aware that there's a tension in this relationship, that there's maybe been some distance put between you and them. So, as Jude here urges us to look after ourselves, he says, keep yourselves in the love of God. Seek to obey him in all that you do. And to help us do that, because you and I know this is not easy. Our, our hearts are rebellious. We often want to do what's at odds with God's word. But to encourage us in doing this, Jude goes on. He says, keep yourselves in God's love as you wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to bring you to eternal life. He's reminding us that Jesus is coming back for us. He's coming back to take us home. And, he's, and so he's saying, you know, keep up the fight. It's worth it. It's worth the wait because Jesus is coming to take you to this eternal bliss where you'll never struggle with sin again. Just before we move on, though, and leave this first point of how Jude tells us to keep ourselves, notice how he manages to include another trio in this instruction. He mentions the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. So he says, first of all, pray in the Holy Spirit. Then he says, keep yourselves in God's love. And then he says, as you wait for the mercy of the Lord Jesus. He's got a triplet within his triplet. So that's Jude's first instruction then. Look after yourselves. Look after yourselves. And to do that, he tells us to build, to pray, and to keep but then secondly, look out for others. Look out for others. The Christian has a God-given search and rescue role to try and save those who are perishing. And you know, no matter how far someone has strayed, they're never outside the reach of the saving power of Jesus Christ. They could be decades in their sin. That's no obstacle to Jesus. And Jude, he's now focused then on our duty to look out for others, but only after emphasising that, first of all, you look after yourself. Because you can never help others spiritually unless you yourself are in good spiritual health. There's no point throwing someone a life belt unless you're on solid ground yourself. So as Jude then mentions, uh, three different approaches. He's talking about people at three different stages in, in their straying from God. Different approaches depending on the different stage. We see these in verses 22 and 23. So the first is this, be merciful to those who doubt. Those who doubt. So he's talking here about people who, people who have questions, people who are questioning things. Maybe you, they may be confused by the message that they've been hearing through the false teachers that Jude has already exposed. Those men he calls ungodly men who, who've been saying, you can live any way you please because God is a forgiving God. That's left some people confused. And you know, people are often confused. We need to, we need to get this. People are often confused about God and about the Bible, and about themselves, and about the world around them. And probably nowadays, more than ever, because the internet and social media enables anybody with a viewpoint to put themselves forward as if they were an expert on humanity, or on God, or on the Bible. Now Jude, Jude had no time for the false teachers. But what he's saying here is that we make time for those who've sadly been influenced by them, for those who've been wrongly led by them, those who are wavering in their faith, who are, who are wondering, who's right here? Who should I believe here? And he says, be merciful to them. Be merciful to them. Because were it not for the fact that God was merciful to us, we could be in a worse situation than anyone you see around you. Anyone. Deal gently, he's saying. Take time to help those who are genuinely struggling with doubt. And then his second uh, 
advice here is snatch others from the fire and save them. So he's talking now about folk who've gone a step further, folk who've been taken in by, by the false teachers and have already strayed into sin and are in danger of hell. He says, snatch them. Snatch them and save them. Now I have to confess that I, I'm not really sure how we apply this in any specific situation. But what I mean by that is this. What extent do you go to? How do we snatch people from the fire? How far do you go to bring a sinner to his or her senses? Well, clearly Jude is saying to us, you do everything you can, everything you can, to save a soul from hell. When you see someone straying, when you see someone who used to be part of the church and their attendance is waning, becomes sporadic, eventually stops, they've gone their own way, what do you do about it? Does this not convict us that we ought to be doing lots? We're to snatch them from the flames. We're to act as if they were in a, in, a, in a house that's burning down. That's what Jude is telling us. Snatch others from the fire and say, maybe, maybe they don't realize the danger they're in. So maybe we need to tell them, we need to persuade them because the road they've taken will lead to destruction. But then Jude gives a final instruction with regard to looking out for others. You have it in verse 23 as well middle of the verse, to others, show mercy mixed with fear, hating even the clothing stained by corrupted flesh. So this is probably the, the most difficult one to decipher. But if he's thinking of progression in sin, which it seems to be, like he, he talks first of all of the group who, who are doubting or, or, or being tempted. He talks secondly about those who are, who've already uh, engaged in sin. It seems that this third group are those who are immersed in it. They're immersed in it. And when he says show mercy mixed with fear, he's, he's really saying you need to tread carefully here lest you yourself get entangled in it. And you know that's exactly the same kind of advice that we hear from the Apostle Paul when he writes the Galatians. In Galatians 6 he says this, Brothers, if someone is caught in a sin... You who are spiritual, in other words, you who have looked after yourselves, first of all, you who are spiritual should restore him gently. Get that note again, gently. But watch yourself, or you also may be tempted. You see, every Christian, even the strongest, the most mature Christian, is, is, is still a sinner saved by grace still susceptible to temptation. You see, not every Christian could go and serve the Lord in that red light district. Not every believer could go and sit along and support an alcoholic. Because for some, that would be putting themselves in temptation. And that, I think, is what is meant here when he says, hating even the clothing stained by corrupted flesh. So, in, in that day, in Jude's day still, Someone who was a leper, their clothing was burnt because to ensure that contamination didn't spread. And that's the thought behind what Jude is saying here, that the contamination spreads, that the sin entraps somebody else as well. So Jude is saying, let me, let me just try and draw it all together. Jude is saying, he says, you Christians, you are on a search and rescue mission. But you need to deal differently with people according to their circumstances. So he's saying, deal gently with some. Deal firmly with others. But also deal carefully where necessary. Firstly, he's been saying, look after yourselves. But then he says, go and look out for others. Snatch them from the fire and save them. Well, the background to this letter comes from Sodom and Gomorrah. 
And do you know that there was only one man who escaped from Sodom? That man was Lot. And even though Lot knew that that city was to be destroyed, and even though Lot knew how abominable the sin of the city was in God's sight, yet he was in no rush to leave. He had to be dragged out of that city before it burnt to the ground. Lot was saved by the skin of his teeth. I wonder today, is the Lord himself dragging you, drawing you, pleading with you to escape the fire, lest you be eternally burnt? Amen. Lord, we thank you that we have your word. We thank you that along with all its warnings, there is encouragement to us and there is a challenge to us as well. Encouragement to look after ourselves by immersing ourselves in your word and in prayer and to seeking to follow in your ways. But also, Lord, a challenge that we reach out to others around us who are in danger. Help us, Lord, we pray to do this. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we're going to finish singing in Psalm 30, the Sing Psalms version of Psalm 30. From the beginning down to the verse marked 5. O Lord, I will exalt your name, for you have rescued me. You did not let my foes rejoice and gloat triumphantly. Verses 1 to 5 of Psalm 30, to God's praise. of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.